Hey everybody, welcome. I just wanted to do a quick bonus video to talk about where you can go from here. If you manage to get through the series and you're just craving more content, of course I'm gonna be releasing some on my channel. So stay tuned, be sure to be subscribed and hit the notification bell. I hope to talk about some of the ideas I'm going to mention in this video in upcoming episodes. That being said, in the meantime, I'm going to give you 10 different ideas of things that you could study after finishing this series. So the first two that I wanna talk about briefly are two React hooks that we did not get the chance to cover in this series. The first one is called Use Ref. This allows you to keep track of some state, but it doesn't cause the UI to be refreshed when the state is changed. So a little bit different than Use State, and it can be used for some various other interesting things. So definitely check out Use Ref. Number two, second hook that I wanna talk about is Use Reducer. This is actually in a bigger category of state management. If you have some complicated application and you need different ways of managing state, then you want to look into this hook as well as various tools out there such as Redux or this other one, I'm not even sure how to pronounce, Zustand, which I hear a lot of people talking about. I haven't used it personally and the only time I ever used Redux, I kind of wanted to die. So I generally avoid these when I can, but as your application grows in complexity, sometimes it makes sense. I think my problem was that I just didn't put the initial effort to learn how the tools work. I just started trying to use them. So definitely make sure if you're going to introduce some new tools that you understand them, do some extra research to learn the different syntax and things you need to know. Number three is cookies and sessions. We talked about user auth, but we used local storage, which, you know, is widely debated. I personally think for our use case, it was fine, but you may want to learn about cookies and authentication with cookies as you continue to build your React skills. It's something I wanted to fit in the series, but I just didn't feel like I had enough time to cover adequately. If you're looking for content around this, Dave Gray is your guy. So you can do anything like Dave Gray cookies, and you're going to get a lot of information on React login. I hope to do more content on cookies in the future, but in the meantime, I'm gonna to have to point you this way. And with this, you should probably study different security concerns about the different approaches. You know, you have to start researching cross-site request forgery. Since cookies are automatically provided to the server, we have to consider what that might mean for the security of the application. Again, it's not something I can really go into in detail right now, but giving you a little bit of information if you wanna do some extra research. Sessions are related, so you probably want to understand those as well. Cookies are client side, sessions are server side. The fourth thing that you might want to consider learning more about is how to create a user profile. So how do you maintain that user being logged in and conditionally display that user's information? So this should all be retrieved in the back end by that user. So we can retrieve data from the database by some user ID and use that information to display on the front end and only allow that user to edit that information or view private information if they are logged in and have the appropriate access. Number five is styled components and various other ways of creating pretty React applications. Styled components is basically how you compare some CSS with a component, and you can start to use this to create a component library, sort of like Material UI that we used earlier on in the series. So as you start building multiple React applications, you might find, hey, I'm doing a lot of things over and over again. Maybe I can start creating a nice looking component library and make this process a lot easier. And with that, studying some of the other CSS stuff, I'd really try my best to learn Flexbox Grid, at least the basics so you have a decent understanding of how that works. This is something even I want to improve on and I'm hoping to go into styling applications in more detail personally to build those skills. So maybe one day we'll get some more design content up here on YouTube. Number six is more on backends and data storage. So the backend we used in the series was Django. We also used Next.js. You may be interested in Node.js and this is one thing that I actually have coming out this year. So I'm not giving this, oh, sometime in the future and, you know, it never actually happens. I'm intending on creating this by the end of the year. So if you want a Node.js series, definitely be sure to stay tuned for the upcoming episodes. So all these different backends, another really good one that you might want to familiarize yourself with is Firebase. This is really popular in the React space and the different types of databases out there. 
probably start learning about those. This one isn't a backend database, but it would be worth learning about indexed DB for a front end database, basically a database stored in the browser. Different than local storage, but similar in concept. So that might be something worth doing some research on. Number seven is e-commerce, but I'm specifically talking about the ability to take credit card information. And I would suggest outsourcing this essentially to some SDK or API. So I would look into Stripe and PayPal. If you want to sell something on your application and you're going custom, you know you're not using Shopify, I would still highly recommend not collecting credit card information to save yourself unless you absolutely need to and you're positive everything's secure. Whenever possible, I would outsource and use tools that already exist. Outsource might not be the best word there. I don't mean like paying somebody to build that for you. I mean, there's tools out there already. Shift the liability to those tools instead of having that liability on yourself at the cost of possibly paying a small fee or whatever it may be, but probably worth it. So definitely learn a little bit more about e-commerce. It would be good to learn about carts and all that stuff as well, but I really think having some practice with taking payments would be cool. Number eight is WebSockets and real-time applications. This could be used to create chat applications or games. Very cool idea. Definitely research it if you want to go down that route. This is basically where the client and the server maintain a constant connection as opposed to requests. This introduces a lot of new abilities to have real-time data being sent from the server to the client. Number nine is how to make your application mobile friendly. And I have two ideas here. The first is to learn something like React Native using what we learned about React to create iOS applications, Android applications. Or if that's not really the route you want to go down, at least making sure your website is mobile friendly. So learning more about the different options for styling for whatever framework or library you're using, or just learning about media queries and different dynamic CSS approaches. Definitely do some research on that. You want your site to be mobile friendly since the majority of internet use is actually mobile. And this is a very important thing for SEO. And the last thing I have on here is testing. I saved it for last because it's by far the least important. Kidding, but it, okay, it was a joke, but I also don't really like testing myself really either. In all reality, testing is very important. I think it is useful for regression testing, which is the ability to make sure your software doesn't break things that previously worked, which we have done in the series like a thousand times. So maybe if I had some tests, that wouldn't have happened. With this, I think, you know, sharpening different things that could help prevent bugs such as TypeScript and proper pull requests with reviews up on GitHub. And even if you can't automate certain tests, going through different behaviors of the application and confirming inputs give you the result you expect. So there's two main ways for testing, which is Jest and React testing library, if you wanna research those and learn their differences. So testing is very important. Definitely don't want to ignore it. Those are my 10 ideas. Feel free to give me any other suggestions on future topics down in the comment section. Really appreciate it. Stay tuned and I will see you in the next series. Peace out.